Right, so let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is that fucking adultery sequence in the in the hotel room that just goes on for too oh long. That involves like a vase of flowers smashing, involves a whole bath that is taken at one point, multiple Christ. people under the bed, people out the window, people crossing into like different rooms and shit, people like, you know, getting fake phone calls and leaving and then coming back and just fucking like sex that one person wants to have with someone, but really they want to have sex with someone else. Oh. And then there's two other guys in the room as well. I feel like this was the Civil War, like airport sequence of their day. The sequence that just started and kept on going. And it's just, <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, it got to that point. Cause you know, cause you know what? <laughs> I st- <laughs> I can I can genuinely see. Sorry, that was just such a stupid reference. That was so <laughs> yeah. great. Well, you know what I mean. Like, you know, I can see people in the '60s genuinely getting around this and laughing their asses off because this probably would have been like funny as fuck back then. And like, oh my god, like he's an idiot and he doesn't know she's with him, and also that she might be a milf. And it's like, oh, it's bloody Mrs. Robinson again, and like all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so like, I can see them in the '60s getting around this, and they're like, "Feck, look at this! Like, he's in a bath. How 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 scandalous!" But like, it gets to a point where I just went from like, "Ha ha," to like, "What the fuck is going on?" I was fuming with anger when fucking Inspector Clouseau, a bloody inspector, you don't just get that title easily, looks at a fucking footprint. That's wet in his own goddamn hotel room. And he's like, wait a minute. What is uh, what is all this? Uh? And like his wife's like, nah, let's just have sex, eh? And he's like, no, this is there's something wrong here. And then he just like looks at her and she looks as though she's just been like slapped in the face because she's so fucking nervous about all this. And he's like, screw it. Flicks off the light switch, jumps onto bed. And as he's about to fuck her, a champagne cork goes off in the bed. They get covered in booze and he still doesn't fucking twitch to the situation. What is going on? He doesn't figure out anything. Like, he literally figures out nothing in this movie. Like, it just kind of all happens around him, and he gets phone calls, which is fine. I like that. I really like that. That, like, I like characters like that that are just kind of there along for the ride. But, like, they still have to offer something. As the audience, we're the ones that are meant to be there along the ride, mate. Not him. Exactly. Exactly. But, again, he's the the main character, and he's, he's providing most of the laughs. And on top of that, like, what does he call his wife? Like, haven't, like, you can take a drink every time he says, calls her, what does he call her? Is it my darling? Or is it my angel? Oh, or yeah, something, like, something that? like that. Oh, my God. God, oh. I was so over it by the end of it. I was just like, this sequence has gone on for too long and they've just been fucking calling each other the same same name. And then like after the champagne, like they clean it all up and then he goes back to go to bed again. Like it just keeps oh. going. <laughs> it never ends. It's the never ending sequence, Nathan. He just angers me every time he's with his wife. Why the fuck did he, does he whip out a violin in bed? Like, is that shit funny? Oh, that was funny. I thought that was funny. No, but like that wasn't the funniest violin gag. That was funny like when he, when he he whipped it out and was just kind of like in bed and the lights turned on and he had the violin. Like I was like, all right, that that's that's pretty funny. Again, like I didn't mm. laugh out loud, but I noted it. I was like, that's funny. But the bit that did make me laugh was when <laughs> this is actually funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the surprise is just coming to Brenton now. <laughs> he set the violin away, right? To get fixed. And you know, during this whole adultery sequence, this is the one time I laughed during it. He comes <laughs> back and he goes, Let me test to see if it's if it's still good. And he plays this fucking song that it's just like the worst like playing oh. of a violin like you will ever hear. You can hear tell in your Peter Sellers has never held an instrument in his life. <laughs> Better than ever. Oh, dude, that's why it's funny, though. I laughed my ass off, and he's really impressed with it. He's like, "Mm, it's very good. (laughs) (laughs) And his wife's just sitting there taking it, just, like, slowly nodding. I think it was funny as well, because it was kind of like the actor knew it was funny as well. Like, the actor was in the joke. was just like, "Mm, I can't play violin for shit, but that sounds good. Uh, cause, cause you know, you and me, we both play string instruments. And just watching that, I'm just like, oh, he would get booted out of a room in two seconds if he did that in front of an orchestra. Like, oh, it's just, it was just <laughs> unbearable, Brenton. I just couldn't do that. What do you think our old orchestra coordinator, uh, Mr. B, would think of uh, that, oh, that Christ. violin If our playing. high school teacher who taught us the strings, if he saw this man holding this fucking instrument, he would just, he would just scratch, he'd just put his hand on his head and just shake it and just be like, what what are you doing, mate? Like, he has no skills. I was hoping the one time he'd actually whip out the violin was when he'd do what we saw in um bloody, what is it, Tomorrow Never Dies, when Bond, like, rides the cello down the mountain. I was kind of hoping Inspector Clouseau would do a similar thing. No, The Living Daylights, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, in The Living Daylights, because, like, this past week, like, I've been, like, having conversations 
conversations with various people in my life, and that scene has come up like three times. Really? From the Living Daylights? As in you brought it up or they have? I brought it up once, and but everyone says the same quote of like, they go past the, you know, the, the immigration kind of desk thing, and they're <laughs> like, we have nothing to declare, only the cello. <laughs> <laughs> It would have been great if you knew that gag as a kid, because at the end of each rehearsal, you could have just like said that to your mum and she picks you up. Like, oh, we've got the cello to declare. Like, oh. <laughs> totally. There's so, that's a whole, like, because I hadn't seen Living Daylights before we, we did orchestra together in high school. Like, this, all the cellists miss, missed out on like a, a vintage joke right there to just like yeah. say every time they came in. Or like, or like when we had to tour or get on the bus or whatever to go to the Estedford or whatever we had to do. You know what I mean? Missed opportunities all around. But thanks to classic movie banter if you watch that episode <laughs> if you're a young cello player get in touch get in touch mate get in touch get inspired start whipping that that cello out and make it cracking that joke oh. i guarantee someone will like it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 